Hello, this is the Clay Golem. We are back in Fandolin. This is part of a Foundry VTT series. We are building Fandelva and below the Shattered Obelisk. Uh, and I just wanted to give you a bit of an update on where we are. Past few videos have been a little bit all over the place, you may have noticed, as we've been trying to do some problem solving, uh, working out how we want to do our shops, how we want to be able to move around and things. And we've got a pretty good solution now, and I'm quite happy with it. So in the background, off camera, I've been doing some updates and stuff because there's only so many times you can watch me do the same thing before uh, <laughs> yeah, before I make you cry. Um, so I just wanted to show you what we've got, wh where we are at the moment and how our game is progressing. So first of all, I just want to uh, quickly pop back over here uh, and as the DM, unpause the game. That would be useful, wouldn't it? I remembered this time before trying to get too far. So I'm logged in as a player with Hayley um, and as you can see this is our Fandolin map here and I've done some updates. So I've been through, I've popped out some of the um, Sister Garrily um, and I've popped out some of these NPCs that are kind of just floating about um, the orderly farm down here. Um, you know, so I've popped them out so people can see them and I've tagged these major buildings like the Miners Exchange, the Lion Shield Costa. Uh, town masters hall etc so the way our place currently works at the moment so Haley can wander around um, and as long as I've unlocked them um, the players can just wander in we've seen this before um, is Haley can wander into Barthens provisions can buy and sell items here lovely jubbly and when she's done she can just leave boom and it pops her back outside just outside Barthens Provisions. Uh, she can then easily walk down the road. Uh, you've seen that one before. We can go into the Stonehill Inn. Over there. Why is it over there? Uh, <laughs> we're into the Stonehill Inn. And again, we can move around. Um, we can talk to Toblin. Remember, these are services. So when we buy these, they don't go into our inventory. Um, but that's all good. We can do that. Uh, when we're ready, we can just go to this exit. And it pops her back outside into the street. Um, what other ones have I done that we can do that with? I haven't done the Lux Shrine. Um, I'm not doing the Orchard. That doesn't make sense. What we can do, though, is... Excuse my phone in the background. Uh, we can go to the Lion Shore Costa. Now, you guys haven't seen this one before. Here she is. Elmina Barthen. And we can trade with Elmina. Again, she will buy and sell items. She has a few weapons, um, some basic equipment and stuff like that. Again, once we're done, just go to the exit and it will dump our player back outside. Uh, the only other one of those that I've done, if we wander over here, I figured that there's a good chance, here we go, that uh, the characters will at some point decide to go and harass the red brands directly in their favourite pub. So I thought it'd be good to have a map, a gridded map for that. And as you can see, I've already populated with this some red brands. So again, the characters can walk in here um, and when they're done, they can exit. So uh, so those are all working, which is great. Now, they can't actually buy anything off the half orc at the moment. Um, I've not set him up as a vendor. There's a couple of other people I want to set up as vendors, like, for example, Sister Garrily, where they can buy some services off of her um, if they've got the coins. Not very much. But the other thing that I did is, while we can move around freely here, if while I'm distracted as the DM, uh, we've got Haley's wandering up here and she attempts to go to the Tresden Manor without me realising it. Not sure if you saw, just look down at the bottom. It's come up and said game paused. So there's a active tile trigger just under here where Haley is that if any of the player characters cross it, it will automatically pause the game. So now I can't move my token because the game's paused. So it just stops the characters from wandering off to the, the Tresden Manor without the DM realising it. And in fairness, if I think about it, that's what I should do with the Sleeping Giant as well. Is, yes, by all means, you can teleport into the Sleeping Giant, but it will pause the game. So the DM goes, oh, right, okay, I need to deal with that. They've decided to wander in there. No problem at all. It will automatically pause the game. And even if I'm dealing with somebody over here, I can wrap up what we're doing over there while that player is just paused and then I can say, right, okay, 
I only know there's two reasons it would auto pause, either because they're going up to the manor or because somebody's gone to the sleeping giant. And then of course, as the DM, I can easily pop into the sleeping giant and find out what the hell is going on. Like who's in there? So I'm really happy with the way this works. And we've got our shops working. We can move around town. We can go in and out of places. Lovely. Little bit of detailing to do on some of these characters and stuff. Um, but generally, I'm really happy with it. Uh, just one word on Monk's Enhanced Journal that we had installed. We were playing with that for shops. And we found it was a little bit glitchy still because of the issues with the 3.0 game engine updates. Um... But because we're using item piles now, what is Monk's Enhanced Journal giving us? Obviously, it doesn't just give us the shop thing. It gives us a few other bits. But we know the 3.0 game engine updates to the journal are really good and really effective. So I've actually disabled Monk's Enhanced Journal for now because we're not using it right now. Um, it might be. It might have to come back later <laughs> when we go, oh, yeah, hang on a minute. We need it for that. But uh, the, the base journal is, is much improved. Uh, so, yeah, we don't need it. Okay, so uh, let's look at our scenes here. Fandelver and below. Uh, so in Fandolin, so we, we finished chapter one. The Goblin Ambush, Cragmore Hideout, uh, and the Goblin Trail. Great. Um, chapter two, we've got Barthens Vision, Lion Shield, Costa, Fandolin. We've got the Red Brand Hideout. Just show you that if you hadn't seen it. So this was all done, all walled up and everything else ready to go with some lighting, um, etc. So I'm happy with that. Um, we've done the Sleeping Giant, as you just saw. That's a new one. Stonehill Inn has been done as well. So effectively, we've kind of finished that whole chapter, which is brilliant. So it, I just wanted to sort of wrap up this chapter and just say right that's where we are that's how we're doing our shops and things and, and what so you guys can see it all together so what are we doing next okay we need to move on in the next video I'm not going to do it in this video i'm going to be sneaky and i'm going to create the folder so we are going to be creating chapter three which is known as the spider's web so that will be our next set of videos will be building that now within that there's a number of encounters um, that includes the town of Conanberry, um, Conyberry rather and Agatha's lair uh, there's the old owl well there's the ruins of thunder tree which is potentially quite a big one um, there's the wyvern tor and of course cragmore castle if you don't know the adventure already obviously you know there will be spoilers as we go through and create those things and i'd like to say really you kind of you know if you're a player you don't watch these but i want you to watch but i don't want you to watch and spoil it for yourself but i do want you to watch <laughs> make up your own mind but it will be spoilers and i'd hate for you to then end up playing the adventure and going oh right i've seen all this before i know exactly what's going on for example looking at this right now and you've got all oh, secret doors where are they um so yeah that's the plan uh it's all good now we did we spent quite a lot of time when we did the original uh storm wreck isle when we were building scenes because we were learning them i say we i keep saying we don't i let's face it i am more experienced than i was when we did that so a lot of those scenes should go quite a lot quicker we're better with building walls now we're better with doing lights now we're better with doing um, background sounds although i still want to add more sounds to all of this especially fandling things like the inns and stuff um we now can do our tile triggers much better than we could before so lots and lots of things we can do much much quicker than we did so we should be able to power through those reasonably fast and just crack on building that's the plan anyway um, that's it for this video. It was just a summation of chapter two, really, how far we've come and what the plan is for the next few videos moving forward. Let's get it done. Uh, once again, thank you very much for all your support. Really appreciate it. Uh, keep those brilliant ideas coming, those uh, where you see me do something silly or there's a better way or a different way of doing it. Always happy to explore options. Thank you very much. See you in the next one.